Good Monday morning, Pastor Rob here, I'm driving. Wanted to get the video out today. I uh, hope everybody's doing good, had a great weekend. I was thinking this morning about what I call the four seats of ministry. Um, pastors are often given uh, ultimatums for church growth, the pressure of church growth and all that. And it's okay to have a goal for church growth, but it's unfair to hold a pastor accountable for the results of church growth, especially when he's doing his job. And I hear this constantly. So I just wanted to talk about, you know, the four seats of ministry is what I call it. Um, now, if your pastor's lazy, that's another thing. But you can't necessarily, if he's doing his best, hold him accountable for church growth. You cannot force people to come to church. And, and I bring that from the scriptures because in 1 Corinthians 3, there's an argument in the church. Paul's handling it. And I would say this. If you read 1 Corinthians 3, you'll see this, that we're supposed to do three things. Number one is this. We're to plant the seed. The seed is the word of God. Everybody's responsible. It's not just the pastor's responsibility. If you're in the church and you're a believer in Christ, it's your responsibility to plant the seed. That's the word of God. That may be street evangelism, just a phone call, just a nice hello, just a opening a door for somebody say, God loves you. Um, whatever that may be, good work. I always tell people at work, if you don't have the time, showing up on time and being a model employee is a great testimony as a believer. Number two is watering the seed. You, you follow up with the people you talk to. You see them at work. You consistently do a good job and they see that. That's watering your seed. Your, your uh, example of being a good employee, just for an example, uh, being a nice person, so on like that. But watering your seed, watering the seed or entering a work that somebody else began. When we won Gene Lieber to Jesus Christ, his wife had told me he was baptized at like 12 or 13. His parents really loved him, tried to get him to go to church. He wouldn't go. He didn't start going back to church until he was in his 70s. So I was watering a seed that had been planted. Gene, Gene for sure accepted Christ right before he died and was a changed man. So I was watering a seed somebody else planted. Seed number three is God gives the increase. Paul is very adamant about this. It's God that gives the increase. You can plant, you can water all day long, and that's our job. But the increase is not our job. You cannot put a noose around people's necks and drag them into the church and say, look at our church growth. We've done a great job. <clears throat> that's not going to work. That's not our responsibility. The th so the third seat is when we sit back and watch God do what God does, as he promised. He's the one that gives the increase. The one that waters, the one that uh, sows the seed is nothing, according to Paul. We're nothing. We will reap a reward for our efforts, but it doesn't mean our church is going to grow. It doesn't mean we're going to have an impact. And I'll give an example is that Jesus, in three and a half years, couldn't convert Judas because of free will. Now, he could have forced him as God to serve him, but God doesn't want slaves. He doesn't want um, people that don't want to be converted. He wants people that genuinely love him. So he did not convert Judas, and Judas uh, betrayed him, sold him out, and committed suicide after working with Jesus for three and a half years. So that's seat one is planting, seat two is watering, seat three is uh, watching God give the increase, standing back, waiting on God, praying, praying over the work that you've done, uh, and not holding your pastor accountable for growth. It's not his responsibility. It's his responsibility to plant and water and do the work, disciple, look after the church, look after people, do visitations, things like that, but you can't hold them responsible for growth. And, and, don't, and, and this is why I say that too, is because I meet other Christians that say, I can't I win anybody to Jesus, I'm frustrated, this world's going to hell, it's crazy. It's not your responsibility. This world may be going to hell. It's your, it's your responsibility to try to save it. It doesn't mean you're going to be successful. But don't stop planting. Don't stop watering, because your Heavenly Father is pleased when you do that. And, but don't give yourself the pressure of, of con conversion. Uh, God will give the increase in his time. And Gene, again, Gene Lieber was 70-something years old before he decided. And I can't imagine how many people tried to win him to Christ before that. So seed four would come out of um, Galatians 6, chapter 9. And I would say this is it. This is probably the end of it. So you plant, you water, you allow God to give the increase. You sit back. You read your Bible, you study, you pray, you pray over the people you've ministered to, and wait for God to give the increase. And then C4 is uh, Galatians 6, 9, 
would be in due time, you'll reap a harvest. So I think what we were having at our church was we would do things. We'd have 500 people show up and then we'd have maybe one person come to church and that was bothering a lot of people. And so, but that's unfair because you did the planting, you did the watering. It's up to God to give the increase. And some of those people that you, like we baptized 22 children at a, a VBS one year. They never came to our church, but we planted and watered. God will give the increase maybe in their 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s. They'll be like, man, I was at a VBS one year. And that VBS loved me. And they baptized me. I remember. And that could have an impact on their life. And you could be a part of that. Uh, that harvest in the future. You won't even know it till eternity. That that little uh, cookie you gave a kid at VBS. That little prayer you prayed with a family that maybe came to see VBS. And didn't come become converted right away. Uh, 40, 50 years down the road, maybe they give their life to Jesus Christ because of something you said, but you'll never know till eternity. So, in due time, you'll reap a harvest. You'll reap a harvest of your investment, but a lot of times we enter into somebody else's work. You meet somebody, you talk to them for three or four hours, they come to church, give their life to Christ, they get baptized, and they start attending church. Not because you met them five or six hours ago, but because somebody had been working on them for a lifetime and you had the opportunity to reap that harvest. So my encouragement today is don't give up. Stay out there. Keep preaching. Keep living. Please keep living the word of God. And someday you'll, you'll uh, reap a harvest. And, and I know a lot of us pray for our own families. How many of you have family members that you're very close to and, they, and you can't win them to Christ? It's frustrating. But somebody will. Keep praying. Don't give up. So plant the seed. Water the seed. Stand back and pray. Let God give the increase. And in due time, you'll get a harvest. And I promise you get a reward in heaven for that too. That, that's also in 1 Corinthians 3. So everybody have a great, great week. And I'll see you tomorrow morning.